and welcome to my studio. This is where I have been making all of my videos in lockdown, uh, which if you haven't seen, actually, if you've not seen any of those, I put them up on my uh, Nicola Foxfield channel and I'll pop a link or a card for that. It'll either be in the box below or I'll stick a card above. Uh, so you can go and check those out. Please do watch the videos, like and subscribe because it would make me really happy. Uh, but yes, yeah, so this is the studio. This is where I do all my recording. I'm appearing to you today in my capacity as editing Nicola um, because I haven't been on stage for a long time because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I started trying to occupy my time by going through my old memory cards and I found some photos and some footage of when I did Jekyll and Hyde in 2016. So I thought I'd make that into a video. Now, this production was the play by Eric Gracie rather than at the musical. Uh, it was set in the jazz era, so there was singing in it, but it was first and foremost a play and it was amazing. Uh, so I'm really excited to be able to show some bits of that and also some of the people I worked with who are some of the most wonderful reprobates I've ever had the privilege of working with and I'm still friends with them all now. So if any of you lot are watching, hi guys, I love you. Bear in mind this was in the early days of my filming so expect some shaky camera work. Without any further ado, let's go. Let's step back in time to 2016 when I was performing in London in Jekyll and Hyde and I was blonde. This was actually the second time that we'd performed this show. We did a pre-Christmas run in 2015 and then after Christmas we came back in January. We did some rehearsal up in Birmingham and then we packed the very large set into a van and drove it down to the cockpit theatre uh, where we all spent the day putting the set up. And as you can see from this picture, there was a lot of set and it took us a very, very long time and we were all quite tired by the end. So uh, I'm currently in my dressing room at the, uh, where am I, <laughs> cockpit theatre. Um, I'm not feeling very well, as you can probably tell by my face, the fact I'm sweating and the fact I can't remember where I am. Uh, but show must go on and all that. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to show how wonderful makeup can be <laughs> and hair at turning you from somebody who looks like this into somebody who looks like a nightclub singer and the beautiful rose. So this is the beginning. I'll come back and I'll show you perhaps in the middle, but certainly I'll come back and show you the end result. All right, so I'll see you in a bit. I forgot to add one key thing in my recovery, which is this, my lovely chamomile and honey tea. Yeah, I feel a lot better once I've drunk that. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking a lot better now and the tea is helping. So now I'm gonna go on to do my hair and then hopefully I won't look quite so horrific as I do now. All right, I'm halfway through my hair. Obviously this is not the finished product, uh, but I thought you'd like to see it. I always think I look a bit like some kind of crazy um, China shepherdess at this point. Uh, so anyway, I will uh, finish up and then I will pop a final image of how I look. Uh, it's taken me about 15 minutes longer to do this than normal because I'm <laughs> just moving a little bit slower. But anyway, so this is the midpoint of the hair and the next thing you see will be my finished hair. So here we are, we have the finished product. Uh, hair looks quite nice, face looks a bit better. I don't quite look as dead as I feel now, so this is a good thing. <laughs> Let's take a little tour backstage. So we're coming in here from the bar in the cockpit theatre through this door marked backstage. I don't know why I've got the light on on my phone there. I'm really sorry about that. Um, and then as you can see, the backstage corridors are quite narrow. They're quite spartan. And some places can be a bit of a labyrinth. But this one was simple. Come through this door, we'll turn left. And there you are. You're already at mine, Sarah and Charlotte's dressing room, which if we just pop in here, you can see it was a nice big dressing room. And I really liked this one. So I'm leaving my dressing room now and I'm going to enter as if I was coming on stage left. So I'll walk down the corridor and through this next door, very handily marked stage left. Now we can talk in these corridors, but you do have to be very quiet because you're very close to the stage. But this next set of doors I'm going through will take us directly onto the stage. So you can't talk at all here unless it's scripted. Now to enter, we would pass through these beautiful curtains and you see we have arrived stage left. Or, to enter from the audience perspective, we're going to come down the audience steps from the bar to these lovely doors at the bottom and you'll come through into the auditorium, which for us, for this show, was configured into audience on three sides. And you can see our set looking pretty darn splendid. Um, uh... 
The character I'm dressed as here was Rose, which was probably my favourite. Constance was lovely, but I think I really enjoyed the dramatic portrayal of Rose. We're in the interval, so there's just time for a very quick dressing room tour. Uh, this is quite a nice dressing room, actually, because we've got a microwave there, which is lovely. There's a fridge, I've got the sinks. It's a bit Spartan and whatnot. Um, and this is my area, just here. Um, I don't like to have a lot of clutter in my dressing room. And I also, like other people, I don't even like to decorate my mirror. Um, so all I've got with me is I've got my makeup here, bits and pieces. I've got some stages, uh, so I've got some stuff to read in between shows. My Kindle, my hairbrush, my all-important lippy, and this for my herbal teas. That's pretty much it. That's all I have in here. Um, and in this show, I don't even have that many costumes as well. So I don't know if you can see, it's just this is the costumes over here. And that's, that's it, really. That's all there is to my dressing room this time. Okay. Now, there's a stereotype that when singers sing happy birthday to one another, they harmonise. And I have to tell you, that's completely, totally and utterly true. Dear Stuart, happy birthday to you. Absurd. I know we both won't say a word. Maybe I shall meet Thanks for joining me in that little trip into the archives. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I have got another video in the works at the moment, so that may come out soon. In fact, I'm deliberately saying this on camera because then I have to finish that video. It isn't a backstage video, I'm afraid, because as I said, I'm not performing at the moment, so I can't do that. But it is something that is connected to um, my life in theatre, so I hope you enjoy that. And one last thing before you go. If you're watching this in the time of the pandemic, I just want to say, please, 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 please support the arts. If you are able to make donations, please do that. And if you can't, that, that's fine. Just raise your voice in support of us because we really need it right now. And if you're watching this in the future, perhaps, when the pandemic is a thing of the past and maybe we don't need to wear face masks anymore, in a world I can't even begin to imagine. Well, in that case, still support the arts. <laughs>